Yo, what's good, YouTube? It is your boy Charles here from the CG Sports Podcast. We're talking sports. It's more than just a hobby. And welcome, everybody, to episode number 58 of the CG Sports Podcast. Today, we've got another big episode for you guys. Of course, we'll go through our NBA news, our NFL news. We got our NBA picks for tonight, our NFL picks for tonight, as well as your sports betters lock of the night. So without further ado, man, we're not going to waste any time. Let's get straight into the video. Starting off, with our NBA news, LeBron James is expected to return Friday against the Boston Celtics. He's been out two weeks with an abdominal strain, and he's coming back. I remember we were talking about that he could be missing one to two months, but it looks like he recovered a lot quicker than what a lot of people were expecting because it's only been two weeks, and he is coming back on Friday, so I'm very excited to see what he brings to this Lakers offense because they are in desperate need of him with how much they have struggled. But we've already spoken about that. Let's move on to our next topic. Moving on over to Cleveland. Cavs rookie Evan Mobley, who has had a phenomenal rookie season so far, let's just have that be known, is out two to four weeks with a right elbow sprain. Now, this is a big loss for them. Mobley, as I said, has been phenomenal for the Cavaliers. They're already without Colin Sexton, who's going to be out for a very, very long amount of time. And now missing Mobley, we might be in for a big losing streak here from the Cavs, and they might even just drop out of the playoffs for the moment. I would not doubt it. Moving on to our next story, DeMar DeRozan, who we all know signed with the Bulls this offseason, actually was quoted saying that he thought he was going to be a Los Angeles Laker. DeMar DeRozan said, I felt like going to the Lakers was a done deal and that we were going to figure it out. So apparently there was some type of issues with uh, whether it's a contract negotiation or whatever it was, there was some type of issue going on between DeRozan and the Lakers organization, but he said he thought they were going to figure it out. Clearly, that did not happen, and instead he ended up signing with Chicago. But it's definitely something to think about. If DeRozan would have signed over there, maybe they don't sign Russell Westbrook, and the Bulls probably aren't as good as they are right now, considering DeRozan has been a top-10 scorer in the NBA so far. So it's something interesting to think about, but nothing worth going crazy over. Just something interesting that I thought we should share now, these next two are going to be two statements by Stephen A. Smith. Both uh, are absolutely insane. So the first one, Stephen A. says that Kyrie Irving is a sad excuse for a professional and that he hopes that Kyrie gets cut because he is a disgrace. Now, Stephen A., I think you're out of your mind, man. Obviously, I don't like to talk a lot about the political stuff, the vaccine or whatever, but I think Kyrie is entitled to do whatever he wants. If he doesn't want to get the vaccine, he doesn't mind not playing basketball, then so be it. Uh, he will, he'll sit out and he won't play basketball. But to say he's a sad excuse for a professional for questioning the reliability of a vaccine, I think is a little ridiculous. And I think Kyrie is entitled to do whatever it is he wants to do. Now, for the second statement from Stephen A., Stephen A. Smith says that he believes it is over for LeBron James and he will never win another ring. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, I am on a second podcast called New Rivals with Solo as well as Light Out Sports. And we just recorded an episode talking about will LeBron get another ring? And I said, absolutely. I think he will have one, if not two more rings forthcoming. So to say LeBron will never win another ring is crazy, especially because he has not regressed yet. He is still playing at the same pace. He's still getting better every year. So until I see some clear, clear regression from LeBron James, I'm going to sit here and continue to tell you that LeBron is not done and that he still has championships to be won. Now, moving on to our final NBA news, former Sixers player Charles Barkley has said that he thinks the Sixers should trade Ben Simmons. He was quoted as saying, the marriage is over, let it go. Now, I agree. I think we can all agree that the Sixers should get rid of Ben Simmons, but the problem is Daryl Morey is not going to settle for less than the right deal. And I wouldn't even call it a problem. I think it's the right thing to do. I don't think he should sit here and get gypped out just because Ben Simmons doesn't want to play and because he's complaining. I think that they should either force Simmons to play or let him sit there and go bankrupt. Uh, you don't take the trade for less than what you deserve. And I appreciate that as a Sixers fan that Daryl Morey is not going to get fleeced out of a trade. He's sitting there patiently waiting until he gets the deal that he wants. Now, moving on over to our NFL news, starting off with the biggest story of the week. The Baltimore Ravens have released running back Le'Veon Bell now, I'm very confused by this because we know the injuries that this team has had at running back. J.K. Dobbins, out for the season. Gus Edwards, out for the season. Tyson Williams, out for the season. And Latavius Murray was that next guy up. He had some pretty good games. They signed Le'Veon Bell as well. But now Le'Veon Bell has been cut in favor of Devontae Freeman. And in a sense, I kind of understand it because you get that one-two punch with 
Freeman and Murray. Murray will obviously be your goal line third down power back. And Freeman will be more of your elusive receiving back. So I think it makes sense. But I think it would have been nice to still keep Le'Veon Bell as kind of a middle ground. Because he can do a little bit of everything. But nonetheless, he is on the market. So we'll see maybe a team like the Cardinals could pick him up. Maybe a team like the Packers could pick him up. Maybe just for a couple weeks, obviously. But we'll see. Maybe one of those teams who's struggling at the running back position. Whether it be injuries or, you know, bad play. I think there's definitely a team that could use Le'Veon Bell on their roster. Moving on to our next story, Chargers defensive end Joey Bosa has been placed on COVID reserve, and we still don't know where he stands for Sunday. Obviously, as I'm recording this, it is Thursday morning, so we still don't really know what's going on with Joey Bosa. We don't know whether he'll be good. I would like to think that he'll be all right for Sunday, but obviously no guarantees there. Moving on to Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay Bucks cornerback Richard Sherman will be out, quote unquote, a few weeks with a capturing. Now, we know Sherman has struggled with injuries so far this year. Got signed by Tampa Bay. I thought he was going to be a big addition. Not necessarily a big addition, but a, a good veteran presence and a solid player. But he has not been that. When he did play, he's been getting burnt. And he's been injured pretty damn frequently over the last couple weeks. So out a few weeks with a calf strain, I'm not really too surprised there. And I don't think the Bucks will be hurt too bad by this injury. Moving on over to New York. The New York Jets have decided that they will start Joe Flacco on Sunday against the Dolphins. And the Dolphins, as we said in our last episode, will actually be starting Tua Tagovailoa over Jacoby Brissett. So both these teams have listed their starters when it was clearly in question. And the Jets' reasoning behind this was that Joe Flacco has better in experience, so he'll be able to figure out a complex Miami defense, which I guess in a way makes sense. And obviously with the situation, Mike White has already proven that he is not as good as we thought he was. So I think it makes sense. Why not give Joe Flacco a, another chance to maybe get a win against the Dolphins, which I really do feel is a winnable game. So we'll see if he could come through and get that one done. Moving on over to my Philadelphia Eagles. They've officially opened the 21-day window for Miles Sanders. He is still on injured reserve for right now. But what this means is that whenever he's ready to come back, he can immediately br be brought back onto the roster. He's allowed to practice now. And whenever he's ready to go, they'll be able to take him right off the IR. So some good news there for Eagles fans like myself. We will be getting Miles Sanders back very, very soon. Now, moving on over to New Orleans, another running back situation. Alvin Kamara, who I actually said I wasn't too concerned about his knee injury. He actually ended up missing Sunday's game, which they actually ended up losing to Tennessee. He is back practicing with the Saints. He practiced on Wednesday. I have been told that he's practicing today as well. So his status for Sunday is still unknown, but I would say after practicing the last two days, he'll probably practice Friday and Saturday as well. I would say that he should be good for Sunday. And finally, our final NFL news is going to be heading over to New England. New England running back Damian Harris is officially off the injury report and will play on Thursday night. That will be tonight's game. We'll have New England and Atlanta. We'll get into that one a little bit later. But Damian Harris off the injury report, which means anyone who had Ramondre Stevenson, you need to get rid of that guy. Brandon Bolden might still be viable, but Ramondre Stevenson is no longer an option for all you fantasy football players. Now we're going to move into our NBA picks. We got a few games going on today. I believe it is six games. Yes, it is six games going on today. So we're going to go over all the games and I will give you guys my predictions. Starting off with the Miami Heat and the Washington Wizards. This is a game, two top seeds in the Eastern Conference. The Wizards have kind of come out of nowhere. The Heat have been surprisingly good with Tyler Hero stepping up, getting back to his old ways. I do think the Heat stick this one out, come out with a big win over Washington, 107 to 101. And for our next game, it is going to be an NBA Finals rematch from the past couple years that we've seen is going to be the Warriors and the Cavaliers. Now, normally, I think the Cavaliers, although it might sound crazy, could have given the Warriors a bit of competition. But now, no Colin Sexton, no Evan Mobley. Now, I can't see it, man. I, I think the Warriors win this one with ease. They take this one 104 to 93. Moving on to our next game, it'll be the Los Angeles Clippers and the Memphis Grizzlies. The Clippers have looked really good. Uh, Paul George has kind of been carrying that team same with the Grizzlies when it comes to John Moran I think we're going to end for a very very exciting game and I think the Clippers role players slash supporting cast will be a little bit better than the Grizzlies so the Clippers pull this one out in a very very close game 102 to 98 on to our next game this is going to be probably the least entertaining game of the night the Minnesota Timberwolves and the San Antonio Spurs the Spurs we said have 
desperately been missing DeMar DeRozan. The Timberwolves have been off to a very slow start, but we all know that the talent is there in Minnesota. I think they proved that tonight, coming up with a big win over the Spurs, of course, led by Carl Anthony Towns. They win this one 98 to 92. And moving on to our next game, it is going to be the Utah Jazz and the Toronto Raptors. Now, the Jazz have been red hot. The Raptors have looked very, very slow for the start of this season. They really haven't gotten off to a good start, and I don't think that changes anytime soon. I think the Jazz come up with a big, big blowout win over the Raptors. Give me the final score, 105 to 89. And for our final game of the night, two of the best centers in the NBA matching up, Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic. You guys already know what it is, the Nuggets and the Sixers. Now, my Sixers, I would love to tell you they're winning this game, but I cannot say that with confidence. I think Jokic and company going to come through with a big win. Sixers just starting off their road trips. So there's still going to be that time difference thing, that adjustment. Obviously, playing in Denver is not fun either. Mile High City, not easy to, you know, breathe up there. So I think the Nuggets come out here and win this one. 110 to 97 and that is going to do it for your nba picks for tonight we are going to move on to the nfl now as we will get into the week 11 nfl predictions starting off with our bye weeks the bye weeks for this week will be the denver broncos as well as the los angeles rams two teams that are coming off of losses the rams was very very embarrassing on monday night broncos lost to my philadelphia eagles and let's talk about our record for last week's picks now last week was full of upsets. We had the Vikings beating the Chargers. We had the Niners beating the Rams. We had the Eagles beating the Broncos, another one I didn't expect. There was so many surprise games that you just didn't expect. So last week's record was 6-7-1. and one. That is right. We went under 500 last week, which I'm really not happy about. Hopefully this week we'll be able to bounce back and get up above 500 and hopefully get above 75% this week so we'll have to wait and see but nonetheless let's get into our first game of the week it will be coming up tonight i believe that is at 8 15 eastern the atlanta falcons and the new england patriots now the falcons have been real slow obviously still don't have calvin ridley cordell patterson is dealing with some injuries i do think he will play kyle pitts has stepped it up but mac jones man mac jones i've been saying it since the draft you guys can go back on my channel and go look and when we did a mock draft, I said Mac Jones is the safest pick in this draft. And I think he's the guy with the most upside to be a quality starter on day one. And that is exactly what he's been looking like. He's going to be the offensive rookie of the year. I think Mac Jones and company come up with a big win over Atlanta. Final score, 27 to 13. Now, moving on to our next game, it is going to be my Philadelphia Eagles matching up with the New Orleans Saints now. Alvin Kamara will be returning. I expect Jameis Winston to be coming back as well. I don't expect Trevor Simeon to get the start this week. Um, not really too much to say here. The Eagles will definitely keep this game close. Jayla Hurts had a phenomenal performance last week against Denver. I think that Philly will continue to have success offensively. I expect this to be a generally low-scoring game, but I do think the Saints will be able to pull this one out single-handedly off the play of Alvin Kamara as well as Mark Ingram. Both have been phenomenal so far. So the Saints winning this one in a close one. 24 to 17 and moving on to our next game this is a very very easy call i'm not going to waste too much time here jacksonville jaguars san francisco 49ers the jaguars continue to be horrendous niners riding the momentum off of a big win against the rams which was very very surprising but you know i already stated that we'll get, move on here i think the niners win this one with ease jaguars don't even keep up niners win this one final score 20 to 9 and moving on to our next game. This is one that I think could be close. Washington football team, Carolina Panthers. Definitely an interesting matchup here. Washington will be without Chase Young. I do expect Cam Newton to get the start at quarterback. Obviously, we saw last week against Arizona. It was kind of weird. He was kind of getting this like Taysom Hill type of play style where they were just kind of bringing him in every once in a while. I think this week he will be the full-blown starting QB from start to finish and I think the Panthers come through they win this one 23 to 10 and moving on to our next game it'll be a NFC North divisional matchup the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers now you guys saw a couple weeks ago when Aaron Rodgers was saying I own you I, I honestly forget what team he was playing against but he told them I own you and I think he owns every single team in the NFC North so you guys already know where I'm going with this I think Green Bay coming off a win against 
Seattle, which was a, a kind of sloppy game. I think the Packers bounce back, get a big win this week, going two in a row. They win this one 30-16. And moving on to our next game, it'll be another easy game. Once again, we're not going to talk much about it. The Detroit Lions and the Cleveland Browns. The Lions actually managed to not lose last week, but they didn't win either. They ended it in a tie against Pittsburgh, but nonetheless, you guys know the drill. The Browns are just a better team here. They'll end up winning this one 26-10. Now moving on to our next one. This is the game that I think will be the most exciting, the must-watch game of the week. It is going to be the Indianapolis Colts and the Buffalo Bills. I think this will be a high-scoring game, a shootout, a great battle between these two teams, but I think Josh Allen and those Bills will prevail. Close game, but the Bills pull it out 31-27. Moving on to our next game, we got the New York Jets and the Miami Dolphins. We've already spoken about this game a pretty good amount, so I'll just give you the pick here. I think Tua and this Dolphins crew get it done. A close game, though. I think Joe Flacco keeps it close, but the Dolphins do pull this one out in a 17-13 victory. Moving on to another game that is going to be an easy call, another one we won't waste a lot of time on. Chicago Bears, Baltimore Ravens. You guys already know where I'm going with this one. The Ravens got upset. On Thursday Night Football, they're going to be looking to bounce back with a big win, and I think they will do that big time. I think Lamar Jackson and company on this offense will be out there with a vengeance. They come through with an easy win over Chicago. Final score, 24-7. to Moving on to our next game, it'll be a AFC South divisional match. we got the Houston Texans and the Tennessee Titans, another game that we don't have to say much about. The Titans don't have Derrick Henry, but their offense still looks pretty good against New Orleans. I expect nothing different. The Texans have been subpar ever since Tyrod Taylor got hurt the first time. Yes, he is back, but I still don't see them beating Tennessee. So final score for this one, 27-6 in favor of those Titans. Moving on to our next game, it's going to be another close matchup. The Las Vegas Raiders and the Cincinnati Bengals. This is a game that I could really see going either way. The Raiders, obviously, ever since the Henry Ruggs situation, have had some problems just all around and and it's not even just him it's John Gruden it's it's all the other crazy stuff that's going on with the Raiders the Bengals have had a slow couple of weeks here Joe Mixon has slowed down Jamar Chase has heavily slowed down I do think that the Bengals get it back going this week they win this one over the Raiders in a close one 20 to 13 now moving on to our next game it is going to be another big game to watch on Sunday the Kansas City Chiefs and the Dallas Cowboys are the Cowboys we all know what they've been able to do. They've been a phenomenal team. They did end up losing an embarrassing game to the Denver Broncos just a few weeks ago. But I think the Cowboys are on a good pace. They're going to be a top team in the NFC and a team that you're definitely going to have to watch out for come playoff time. The Chiefs looked a little bit better against the Raiders, obviously, on Sunday night. But I still don't see enough from them to where I can give them a win over the Cowboys this week. I do think they are still an offensive juggernaut. I think they put up a good amount of points this game, but I still think the Cowboys take this one in a close one, 33-27. to Now moving on to an NFC West matchup. We got the Seattle Seahawks and the Arizona Cardinals. Now I know I said Kyler Murray was going to be back last week, and I really did believe that he was, but obviously the Cardinals chose to rest him for another week. I'm telling you right now, there is no way that Kyler Murray does not play this week. I just don't see it. If Kyler Murray doesn't play for three weeks in a row, there is a serious problem going on in Arizona. You just saw Colt McCoy is hurt now. He got hurt last week against Carolina. I don't even know who the next quarterback up is. Kyler Murray has got to play in this game, and I'm pretty sure that he will, and that's all you really need to know. Russell Wilson had a slow start last week coming off that finger injury against Green Bay. Um, I think he will be a little bit better this week, but not enough to beat out those Cardinals, man. The Cardinals have been so good. They just got their second loss in a game that really didn't feel legit because obviously they didn't have their quarterback as well as DeAndre Hopkins. I think the Cardinals bounce back, win this one 26-13. Now moving on to our Sunday night football matchup. We got the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Los Angeles Chargers. Once again, not much to say here. This is a Steelers team that just tied with the Detroit Lions. Yes, they had Mason Rudolph at quarterback, so that was a little bit tougher. But at the end of the day, even with Big Ben, I'm still not worried about this one. The Chargers coming off of a upset loss to the Minnesota Vikings. A lot of people are questioning the Chargers because of this upset loss. And obviously, Philadelphia gave them a good run for their money. I think the Chargers get back on the right track this week, coming up with an easy win over a bummy Pittsburgh Steelers team. Final score, 20-6 to in favor of the Chargers. And for our final game of Week 11, Monday Night Football, New York Giants, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Giants are a team that has struggled 
all season pretty much. Not really too much to say about them. The Bucks got upset big time by the Washington football team last week. Taylor Heineke got it done on them. And I think these guys are going to be playing with a vengeance today. I think this Bucks defense is going to cause some problems. Whole lot of turnovers for Daniel Jones. He fumbles the ball a lot. I'll be expecting one again on Monday night, as well as maybe an interception thrown to one of those secondary guys, maybe Jamel Dean, Antoine Winfield, one of those guys, maybe can hawk up a deep ball and come up with an interception. But nonetheless, Bucks win this one 34 to 16. And for our final segment of the show, it is going to be your sports better lock of the night. Now, we could go with one of these football games, but I am going to go with the NBA for tonight. I'm going to take the Golden State Warriors over the Cleveland Cavaliers at minus nine and a half. As we said, that Cavaliers team is heavily injured, and I just don't see a way that they're keeping up with Golden State. They might keep it close, but then Golden State will be able to pull out in the last five to six minutes or so and pull out a 10 plus point victory. So that is going to be your sports better lock of the night. And that is going to do it for this episode. For everyone who watched to the end, I appreciate you. Make sure you guys comment any discussion topics you guys want to see me talk about. Obviously, we will be back for another episode probably later tonight after the Thursday night football game with an analysis. If not, you will get that video on Friday morning. But nonetheless, appreciate you guys coming through as always. It's been your boy CG, and I'm out. Peace.